Are we ready? Ready. <coughs> Happy Easter, everyone. We'd like you to join with us. This is the day of our risen Savior. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Mark, he says, Jesus cried out his breath. He cried out, and he breathed his last breath. And at that moment, the veil from the Holy of Holies was ripped in two from top to bottom and that's why we can enter into his presence today hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus and then on the first day of the week <laughs> they went to the tomb and the ladies were saying who's going to roll the stone away and guess what when Jesus burst through he rolled that, that stone was gone any hindrance, anything keeping us from being with him is forever, forever taken away. There is no reason, there is no sin, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Hallelujah. Let's just give him praise. Jesus, you are the risen King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning, oh God.
the Son of God, the Son of Man, who is seated at the right hand of the power on high. He is exalted, and now he lives in us if we believe the majesty on high. He's here amongst us, oh Lord Jesus. said yourself that you are not ashamed to call us your family, your brother, your sister, your, your mother, your father. We thank you, Father, for releasing Jesus into the earth, and we thank you, Jesus, for the suffering that you took upon yourself for us. Lord. 
Just as he is, so are we on the earth. Jesus. 
start to open those packets. Uh, some of them can be difficult to open. <laughs> There's two layers, one that opens the, the bread and the other one opens the juice. So. This will probably be Last time we used these type of communions. <laughs> In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So let's take the bread. Hold it in your hand. And I like to break it in my fingers. And then partake of the bread. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that your body was broken. 
Jesus' body was broken so that ours could be put back together. By his stripes, we were healed. And so we receive healing for our bodies, healing for our minds. And we choose to walk in divine health all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, partake of that bread. Do this in remembrance of Jesus. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so we proclaim the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus over our lives, over our minds, over our bodies. I like to do this. I, pre I plead the blood of Jesus over my family, over my sons and my daughter and my wife. I plead the blood of Jesus over my extended family. I plead the blood of Jesus over this church. I plead the blood of Jesus over this city. I plead the blood of Jesus over this state. I plead the blood of Jesus over this nation. In Jesus' name. Let's drink of the cup of the new covenant of forgiveness of sin. <laughs> Praise God. And you can just place that under your seat. Praise God. Thank you all. Thank you very much. We're going to go ahead and receive this morning's offering. If you've been giving online, I would encourage you to continue to do so. If you'd like to give in person, there is a table out there with envelopes. You can fill those envelopes out, place it in the bucket, and we'll receive it after service. But the address, how to give, is right there. And um, If you would like to donate to Revolution Church, you can go online to revolutioncolumbia.com slash giving. Or if you prefer to mail in your donation, you can send it to Revolution Church, 203 East Leslie Lane, Columbia, Missouri, 65202. Employment rates would be the lowest in the nation, in the state. Father, we thank you for the money that we do have, that you would bless it and multiply it, that it would fully fund and resource every dream and desire of our heart and have more than enough to give to everything that we want to give into. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, say amen. amen. Praise God. So... We're going to go ahead and do a couple of an announcements. Uh, where is my announcers? Frank? Debbie, do you want to announce it? You want me to announce it? While he's getting the mic, uh, the Buffalo Gals, the Vegas ladies have changed their name to the Buffalo Gals. <laughs> and they're, they're having a meeting on April the 17th, a Saturday, from 1 to 3, which will be after... Ranks announcements, but there are sign-up sheets at the guest connection. Same day. All right. So I know this is a, a real shock, but we're actually going to try to do a men's thing two months in a row. <laughs> I'm glad you're all sitting down because I, I know this is this is a real shock. Um, April 17th, that morning, uh, nine o'clock, uh, we're going to meet here and we're going to have some breakfast. Um, before you all panic, I am not doing the cooking. Um, I had somebody uh, who's a whole lot better than I am volunteer. So we're going to have all kinds of fun things like biscuits and gravy and eggs and bacon and who knows what all else. There'll be all kinds of food there. So uh, please uh, sign up uh, on the sheet in the lobby there so that we know how much food we need to have. Um, and uh, it'll be a good time. Thanks. All right. I think that might be the first time I've heard biscuits and gravy called a fun thing. But it is. <laughs> I would concur. <laughs>
We turn that into an activity. <laughs> and then next week, uh, we're going to have a guest speaker, Mike Plain, be with us. I want you all to come back and, and hear what he has to say. He has spoken a lot of prophetic things into this church's life over the years. He's been with us every year except last year um, due to the COVID shutdown and things. But... Um, he will be with us next week, and then Crave is going to be on this Wednesday. We're going to continue on with that. It's been good. Anybody, who comes to those Crave meetings? Yeah, it's, uh, there's people that come to those that are hungry for the things of God. They crave the presence of God, so I would encourage you to come if you can make it. Um, let's do something that we haven't done in a, in a minute We'll stand to our feet, and just don't leave your seat, but just uh, greet somebody with your words, and say, tell them who you are, you know, nobody, just for a few minutes. Praise God. <laughs> All right. That's good. I want to read something to you. Some long greetings. Y'all must like each other. <laughs> Praise God. It's good to be back all together. I want to read something to you. It's a prophetic word. It's different than the one I read last week, but... And there's just been some powerful words I want to share with you, and I want you to receive this. Receive this not only for the church, but for you individually. And so it goes like this. It says, I heard the Lord say, soon you will look around and not see a season of messy transition, but you will see the beginning of an era of victories. Soon you will feel a shift in your vision where you once only saw the greatest battle of your life. You will see the glorious new day dawning you will realize that the past few years has been a narrow and perilous path you didn't expect and couldn't avoid, but it was also the path to your freedom. You will see the smoke and rubble behind you and no longer see failure and defeat, but my protection and faithfulness and promise over your life. You will finally take your survival backpack off from your days of searching and waiting and leave your nomadic season behind and settle in safety. Praise God. Let's just lift our hands and receive that word right there. There's more, but I just want to seal that up. It's kind of like save it before you lose it. Amen. Say, we're going to save this as we go. <laughs> Soon the fog will clear and you will look behind you and see there were giants you didn't even know that you defeated. There were impossible obstacles you didn't even know you overcame. There were principalities and assignments that were set against you your whole life that were broken and destroyed. Generational cycles that have been trying to define you and rob you for years simply couldn't follow you through. These lies and ties have been shattering. Let's just seal that right now. Just pray in the Spirit. Just thank Him for that word right now. Just seal it. Just say, I receive it. I believe it. Soon you will wake up and feel like you put on a fresh new pair of glasses. You won't see the same anymore. Where you, only, where you once only could see the warfare, you now are able to see the breakthroughs on the other side of them. Where you could only see lack and deficits and the unraveling, you will be undone when you see how much I have been building you, preparing you, and settling you up, setting you up for decades to come. You will take off the blindfold and be in awe 
of the fresh outpouring of my spirit you see approaching on the horizon. I know you have felt like all is lost, that the world around you is crumbling, and it has been so long since you have seen a wind, but there is something building you don't yet see. You have been struggling to believe that you have a future left and afraid that your children won't have one. But I'm breaking the cloud of foreboding that has made you feel powerless to these events taking place around you in the earth. I'm giving you new prophetic vision and a lens to see beyond any storm and any giant that you ever face again. Your life will be a stake in the ground of hope for those around you that have lost it. You will see that you were created for this moment, this hour. You will roll up your mat next to the pool of waiting and embrace this season without the fear and anxiety that you once shut you down. And you will see that out of these fires of the battle of this season, I have forged you as my weapon, my warrior, my giant killer, and dread champion. And you will be a beacon and a sign of victory that I am moving in the earth and the bride's greatest days are here now. Praise God. Let's receive that. Receive that. The glory of the Lord is here. He's in this room. And and so we're not going to just, you know, uh, Easter and these holidays have this pull to uh, do certain things and and to do certain traditions and and I'm not against traditions as long as God's in them, but um, I really feel like He wants to demonstrate resurrection today versus just talk about resurrection like He's not in the room. And so we're going to do some things here at the, at the end of service. And um, so, I mean, don't get nervous if you, if you haven't been in church for a while. I mean, we're not going to do crazy stuff. And uh, you're, you're, um, you're invited to participate in it if you want to. If you don't, it's fine. It's fine. Okay? So let's just put that out there. Because with it, with Easter and there's, you know, does anybody else know what I'm talking about? Three people. Okay. Well, I should (laughs) should have prayed about that one, I guess. (laughs) Just kept that to myself. (laughs) But anyways, maybe I'm the only one. But um, I want to talk to you this morning about resurrection and, um, but we're going to demonstrate that. We're going to demonstrate that here at the end in a few minutes. But Romans 8, 11 says, But if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies Amen. through His Spirit who dwells in you. And so, you know, this isn't really going to be a lesson on the resurrection, but I just believe that God wants to take care of some things today. He's brought you into this atmosphere to raise some things up that have died in your life. You know, some things that have died in your life uh, need to stay dead. Amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? But there are some things in your life that have died through disappointment and discouragement and lies from the enemy and somewhere some somehow we've exchanged the truth for a lie and we've put more trust in the lie than the truth and those are the things that I want to resurrect I want to resurrect your hope your dreams your health y'all ain't helping me this morning (laughs) <laughs> but you know and, and I want to be careful that we don't just go on defense where we're trying to fix and restore and to uh, get back stuff that um, that we go on offense we make the switch we, 
we get out of first gear and we go after some things, we get an anointing on our life to go after some things on offense that we don't have to take back, but we begin to do what we are called to do, what we're assigned to do, what we're graced to do. So, you know, ministry and, and being a believer isn't all about getting patched up and restored. And I mean, it, that's a part of it. But there comes a point in your life where you have to, to, uh, to get up from uh, what the enemy has done to you, the, being a victim, and go to being a victor. You have to give instead of just receive all the time. And so... Uh, Easter becomes uh, an opportunity. Resurrection Day becomes an opportunity for you to engage in the grace and the ability of God that ha He has put on your life to go begin to go after that which He has called you to do. Amen. And so, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the. Oh, I'm not going to go there. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's turn to Matthew 28. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Matthew 28. Matthew 28. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Let's just stop right there. Either this angel was so large that he could sit down on top of the stone that was rolled away, or he was just kind of bragging a little bit. But this angel that came and, and rolled this stone away, it, and, and he mentions this he, in detail, says, and sat on it. Sat on it. There are angels that have been employed to sit on the barriers to our miracle. And so there are angels on assignment right now that are standing guard of you. They're not just on defense either. They can be employed by the word of God to perform the word of God on your behalf. So when you begin to speak the word, it says they hearken to the voice of the Lord. The voice of his word. And so we have to give voice to his word and angels stand at attention, ready, watching to bring it to pass in your life. And so uh, I think we should employ our angels. Let's just take a minute right now. Because they're just sitting around waiting. They're watching. They're waiting for you to employ them. What is it that you need them to gather what is it that you need them to roll away for you? What is it that you need them to go and do and excel in strength where you have none? Just say it right there in your heart. You don't even have to say it out loud. <laughs> the glory of the Lord is here. Amen. Praise God. Verse 3, and his countenance, the angel, his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing is white as snow. The same phrasing, the same uh, verbiage was used at the, the Mount of Transfiguration when uh, Jesus was talking to Elijah and Moses, and it says that they were transfigured, they were glorified so that their clothing became as sparkling, shining raiment, white as snow. 
Sometimes the glory is described as uh, uh, a high noon sunshine on fresh fallen white snow. It's just so bright. It's blinding. This angel was sitting on top of this stone with raiments, with clothing as white and glistening as snow. He'd been in the presence of God. You are clothed with this same glory now that raised Christ from the dead. He lives on the inside of us. And so when you become glorified, not after you're dead, not during the rapture, not just that, but now we can be glorified. Praise God. (laughs) And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. We talked about the fear of the Lord last week. So there was an earthquake. The stone was rolled away. The, and a bright shining angel is sitting on top of this. The, the guards that were guarding the tomb were shaking and they became as dead men. They fell on the ground just shaking, just uncontrolled shaking. They were afraid because the glory had shown up. And this angel is just sitting there watching him. <laughs> but the angel answered and, and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee where you will see him. And behold, I, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Now, just a little side journey. I don't want to upset anybody's apple cart. But the first evangelists were women. They were women. They were women. So if you have a thing against women preachers, take it up with Matthew. Take it up with Jesus. Praise God. The guard shook. and the, the, the ladies went to tell the other disciples. And they saw Jesus on the side of the road. And let's pick it up over in Mark 16. Anybody bring their Bibles? Are you starting to sink on me? Is the sugar starting to hit your blood? Are you crashing on me here? Mark 16. Um, Just a summary. So Mary sees the resurrected Jesus. Uh, She goes and she is on her way to tell the disciples. On the way, she runs into two of the disciples um, who had seen Jesus And they didn't know it was Jesus until they broke the bread. And it was in the breaking of bread that Jesus is revealed to them. And so uh, Mary went back to tell the disciples. They did not believe her. It says it, it seemed like she was saying idle fables and babbling. But they were excited. They were confused. They were, um, they were, in a hurry. And so they're, they're telling the disciples they don't believe them. These guys go back to tell the disciples and it says they don't believe them either. And so um, Jesus, so there's a theme here of unbelief, 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 unbelief. So here's, here's a thing. Here's a little side note as well. The disciples were required to uh, believe the other disciples' experience when they were with Jesus. 
And so here they're sharing an experience that they had and they don't believe them. They don't believe them. Jesus is gone and, and, and they don't believe them. They're scared. They're, they, they're, it hasn't been revealed to them. They didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. And so I get it. I don't necessarily, it, sometimes it's hard to believe other people's experiences. Amen? Amen? I mean, if it's not your experience, then sometimes it can be out there. Is anybody, am I just, what's, should I just go get my donuts? I mean, it's, praise the Lord. So Jesus shows up, and um, he didn't rebuke them because they weren't gullible. It says he rebuked them because they, of their unbelief and hardness of heart. The hardness of heart. And so um, he was rebuking them because they didn't believe the other disciples' experiences that they had seen him. And so, um, truth spoken in love always carries with it a presence. And if you're a believer, you can pick up on the presence of those words that are spoken, if it's the truth or not. You know if someone's experience is valid because it carries a weight of presence to it. And the words they speak are spirit and life and not necessarily intellectually understood. He, he referred in John 6, you don't have to go there, but when he, um, when he said, I am the bread of life. And if you follow me, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And, um, you know, it says that thousands turned away from him that day. Because they, it says they got offended because they couldn't understand it. And if you try to understand God with your head, you'll miss out on the words of life that he's speaking to your heart. And so in, even in communion, it's not, it's not intellectually understood. It's a thing of the heart. If you sit there and try to figure out communion with your head, you'll miss the promise of health and protection and forgiveness, and all these things that are for your heart. Amen. And so, um, that's just another little side note. Sometimes, the entrance into your personal breakthrough will come through someone else's experience. Someone else's experience is the entrance into your breakthrough. I can remember when I was addicted to alcohol and uh, the person that prayed with me began to tell of a story of another young man and he told my exact story of him praying for someone to get released from the addiction to alcohol just a couple of weeks before. When he said that, I, be, I thought... I was just nervous, but it was the Spirit of God coming upon me, breathing life from that other person's experience, and it was the entrance into my own freedom from addiction to alcohol. Amen. And so I can remember telling him, I was like, it's like you stepped into my room and saw my life, and you just switched the name. Are you trying to trick me? i just been born again a month. He goes, I know nothing about you. But if you want to be free, we can go in this other room, the front living room, and I'll pray for you. And I did. It was the entrance to my freedom from the addiction to alcohol through the other person's experience being told. His words became life and spirit, not intellectually understood. Jesus has this habit of, of putting what 
what you need into someone else. (laughs) And then causes you to become, it causes you to ask them for it. And they have to give it to you. Because if, you don't, if he didn't do that, then we'd all become independent. We would become isolated. We would become self-sufficient. Everything that we needed, we would just get it ourselves. And, and, and it, it, it would remove us from having our part to play in the body of Christ of such as I have, give I thee, give I you. What I have, I'll give to you. What you have, you give to me. And so my strengths become your strengths and your uh, weaknesses become a a target for my strengths to help you and to bring you up, not to live and enable and empower the weakness, but to bring you up to to where your story and your experience can go and help someone else. The authority of the believer, the empowered believer. We're not victims. We're not... We're not just believers at the, at the foot of the cross. The foot of the, being at the foot of the cross is great. It shouldn't be skipped. It's not a step that you have to skip. But you have to go through the cross into the tomb and check it out. He's not there anymore. And then realize that we're not at the grave either. We're not at the grave either. We're now seated in heavenly places, a places of authority. And so our prayers come from a, the heavenly realm to earth, towards earth instead of the earth trying to get heaven to come. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's look in John 11. John 11. Are you still with me? John 11, this is another resurrection. You know, everywhere Jesus went, their resurrections were taking place. (laughs) John 11, now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary that anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. So this is Jesus on his way to the cross, to the events that they call uh, the Passion, the Easter week. And so this is him on his way to that, to Jerusalem. This is, this is just a long story drawn out over several chapters before you get there, but it was actually just maybe a couple of weeks or days before all that took place. So Lazarus the brother of Mary and Martha became sick and it says, Jesus heard that and he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Wasn't very nice, was it? (laughs) Just know that Jesus is never moved by urgent Jesus is never moved by urgent. And so um, it was very calculated. He knew he was sick. Actually, he was already dead. He said he waited two more days, and then when he got there, he said, now Lazarus had been dead for four days. So by the time the word got to him, Lazarus was was already dead. So he stayed two more days. And so this was on his way to be crucified and resurrected. So he shows up, Mary and Martha, uh, they're crying, they're weeping, and this is where he reveals himself as, I am the resurrection. I am the life. In just a few days, I'm going to be raised from the dead. But here's a type and a shadow of what's going to take place in just a few days, and you're going to run to my tomb (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not going to be there. Just like your brother's not going to be in his tomb in just a few minutes. There you, go. 
you know, I, I, I tend to think um, uh, maybe Jesus was just beta testing the resurrection. <laughs> Everything's good. Everything's a go. Lazarus came out just to be sure. In a few days, I'm going to be crucified. I'm just checking to make sure this power is still working. And Lazarus, come forth. Yep, it's working. It's working. We're good to go to Jerusalem now. <laughs> but according to Jewish tradition, the reason he hung out for two more days, according to Jewish tradition, they believe that a, a person's uh, spirit hung out around their body for three days and that they weren't really dead for three days. And so it says he showed up on the fourth day so that people would know that Lazarus was really dead. And so he said, Lazarus, come forth. It wasn't just that, well, they couldn't say, well, he wasn't really dead because it was within the three-day period. Jesus rose on the third day because G the Jews couldn't say he wasn't dead. Praise the Lord. So he reveals himself as I am the resurrection, I am the life. Interesting, if you read on through the next chapter, it says that it, this made the, the Pharisees so mad that Lazarus was raised from the dead. They sought to kill Lazarus again. They sought to kill Lazarus again. And instead, that anger was turned toward Jesus. Let's kill him instead of Lazarus. And so it was the beginning of the stirring of the religious folk of that day. But God had a plan. In verse 40 of chapter 11 in John, it says that, if you would believe, did I not say, if you would believe that you would see the glory of God? So here he rebukes them for unbelief, unbelief, unbelief after he's raised from the dead. But here he's trying to say, if you will believe, if you will believe, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. It's the same as true today. If you will believe, it's conditional. You will see the glory of God. Amen. So the other condition is, if you don't believe, you won't see the glory of God. Amen. If you don't believe in signs, wonders, and miracles, you won't be bothered by them. John, at, at, toward the end, in John 20, I believe it is, he says, these things are written so that you would know and believe. Amen. These signs, wonders, and miracles were written so that you would believe. If you, if, you would, if you would believe, then you would see the glory of God. Amen. In 1 John, it says, that these things that we saw with our eyes, heard with our ears, felt with our hands, caused us to believe. Jesus said it this way. You know, I always kind of thought this was a, a kind of a rebuke, but it could be just a key to signs, wonders, and miracles. He says, oh, you perverse generation, you won't believe unless you see signs and wonders. But if you take the positive part of that, if you flip it, it says you'll believe if you see signs and wonders. So signs and wonders are for us to believe, to reinforce our belief. And so I want to do this and close with this. And you can do this right at your seat. And we'll wrap this up. I believe that this resurrection power that raised Jesus from the dead is here right now on the inside of you. It's on the inside of you. Same spirit, the Holy Spirit. And so, 
if you have any kind of, you know, if any part of your life is without hope, it's under a lie. You've believed a lie. So I want to resurrect some hope in your heart. I want to resurrect some dreams in your heart that have gone dormant. I want to resurrect the possibility that God still wants to use you. It's not a possibility. It's the truth. You know, the devil is, is, is a liar. He says it this way. You're too young. You need more experience. And then he says, you know, you're, you're just middle-aged. You just need to work. You just need to take care of your family. You're too busy. Then when you get older, it says, you're too old. Your best days are behind you. You should just rest and relax and let the younger generation do this. But I believe the resurrection power, the Spirit of God, is available to all generations, to all nations, to all ethnic groups, to all education levels, all economic levels, that God, when He sits on you, dreams and assignments and hopes come alive. And it's not just for your garden, your, your well. You're to become a river, a river, so that your experience can be the doorway or the gateway for someone else's freedom that you now enjoy. And so, you know, maybe you've gone through loss this past year. Maybe, you've, uh, maybe your hopes have just been diminished through discouragement. Maybe you've suffered financially loss. Maybe uh, it's a broken relationship. Maybe it's a family dispute. Maybe it's a uh, whatever it is. If I don't name it, don't, it doesn't mean that God doesn't see it. It, it. Those are just some examples of what I'm talking about. But if you will make yourself available to the power that is here right now, if you will allow that power that's on the inside of you to quicken or to make alive that which is mortal, that which is subject to death. If you, can, if you will allow that to happen, you'll see opportunities, you'll see doorways, you'll see gateways, you'll see entrances into the assignment God has on your life. And so let this day be a, a, a day of opportunity, a day of resurrection, a day of, I'm going to go do that. I am no longer a victim, but a victor. I'm no longer disempowered, but empowered. I'm no longer laying in the grave. My dreams are no longer in the grave. They're in my hand, and they're coming to life today. Amen. So as a prophetic act, just right there where you're sitting, just hold your hand out. Just hold your hand out. And maybe concentrate on one thing. Maybe it's a whole bunch of things. Maybe it's something that's coming up that you just don't see how it's going to come to pass. Release the resurrection power into that circumstance. And with your imagination, begin to see the breakthrough, the turnaround, the enhancement, the empowerment. And then the Bible says <laughs> he's going to do more than you can imagine or think. He's going to exceed that which is in your hand right now. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. If you're here this morning and you have never given your heart to Jesus, you've never surrendered or yielded your life to Jesus, today is a great day to do that. Amen. The Bible says today is the day of your salvation. Not only a 24-hour period, but an era. Salvations are going to begin to flood this city. Amen. God is turning this city Amen. over Amen. to light. And it's easy to get born again. It, it, you just have to do it like this. You just say, whatever it is you believe in your heart. And, and in fact, you may not know what you believe,
But you, th- just this simple, you don't have to know everything to just make a move. Right. You can just say, I believe what he's saying. Amen. I trust God enough that what the Spirit of God is speaking in my heart, it's maybe you're sitting there and you, you feel nervous. You're, you're, maybe your heartbeat is beating faster like mine did when I made that decision. And if it's not, that's okay. But the Spirit of God is here and He's convincing you, convicting you, <laughs> urging you, prompting you. You need what they, those people have in their life. And you want to do that today. You want to yield your life to Jesus. You want to, you just want to say, Jesus, you're my Savior. I believe you were raised from the dead. I believe you died as my substitute so that I don't have to take the punishment for my sin. I believe that in my heart. And now I'm going to say it with my mouth. It says, all that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. So with your mouth right now, out loud so you can hear it. You don't have to yell it. You don't have to scream it. Just say, Jesus, save me. I call upon you now. The Bible says that you're now born again. You're a new creation. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. You're, you've received the salvation that was offered to you 2,000 years ago. You've confirmed your reservation in heaven. Your name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life 2,000 years ago, and you've just confirmed the reservation that he made for you. He says, I go before you, and I prepare a place for you. In my house are many mansions. There there, there's lots of them. I've built you a house and you've just confirmed. You've just, you've just signed the deal with your tongue, your mouth. If you did that today, he, he also says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my father. And so this isn't to embarrass you or anything like that. This is just to, there's just something about boldly affirming that Jesus is your Lord. So just right there at your seat, maybe you prayed that prayer the first time. Just, just raise your hand. You, you prayed that prayer for the first time today, and you just received Jesus as the Lord of your life. I'm not going to have you come forward. I'm not, I just want to get a Bible in your hands. Anybody. Did anybody pray that for the first time and yield your life to Jesus? Praise God. Well, let's stand to our feet. Stand to our feet. Father, in the name of Jesus. We release that resurrection power into our circumstance, into our life, into our families, our businesses, this city, our state, this nation, the world. Father, we thank you that you rose from the dead for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. We'll see you next week. Don't forget to sign up.